Hi, uh, Tim Horschler, New Voyager Trading, back with another issue of uh, Tim Talks. And today, if you will, allow me to have more of a conversation with you. We're not going to be showing you a how-to so much as talking about the uh, Kromsky uh, rigid heddle loom, rigid heddle weaving in general, um, why uh, you might want to consider this as your platform for getting into weaving. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, the history, the origin, the types of projects that you could do on a loom like this, considerations for uh, what should be part of the package when you, you do your purchase, and where that's going to leave you uh, once you, you get into weaving and uh, uh, what becomes of this rigid head of loom down the road. Uh, it's always going to be with you because it's just a, a great uh, a system for doing certain types of projects and even uh, weavers with multiple looms are going to want to have and will have a, a rigid head of loom in, their, in their, their, their studio because it's just a good way to do various types of projects. So we'll talk about this in general and I might run a little bit long so this uh, video might have to be in several parts. Uh, make note of that when you, when you start running the video to see whether it's part one, part two, etc. Uh, but uh, we're going to cover this, we're not going to rush through it and hopefully this will give you the information to uh, determine you know, do you want to weave? Uh, is a Kromsky harp, a rigid head of loom, uh, uh, an approach you want to take? Uh, and uh, where will you be, uh, you know, once you have it, uh, learning this, uh, how will that help you decide about your future with, with weaving? Um, a rigid head of loom, uh, and we'll describe the parts here and why it's called that. A rigid head of loom, this type of weaving has been around for uh, thousands and thousands of years. It's, it's not something that's new or modern or a recent invention. Um, the concept of rigid heddle weaving is, uh, is well understood. It has its applications for various types of projects uh, that make it very uh, desirable for doing certain types of things, more so than, than other types of looms. But it's also a fairly versatile loom and you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, the types of projects that you typically consider for a, uh, a rigid head of loom are things that don't require a lot of complexity in their patterning and design effect. Um, you can't really do that complex type of weaving uh, that you can do on a, a harness type loom like a table loom or a floor loom that has maybe four, or eight, twelve harnesses on it. Um, uh, rigid head of weaving is more straightforward down the middle type of weaving where you get involved with uh, patterning and color and texture is in the material that you use here and how you weave what is the what is the yarn coming from the back to the front the warp what do you weave with the weft and so forth so there's still a lot of creativity that you can you can use with a rigid head of loom that uh, that gives you a variety of different projects that you can work on but Basically, anything from a, a very narrow project, um, a, a belt or a sash, uh, up to uh, runners or placemats or scarves, up to 16 inches, you can do on a Kromsky harp 16 inch uh, rigid heddle loom. But you can't weave something that's larger than the weaving area of the loom. So they make a variety of different sizes, 16, 24, and 32. That changes basically the width of the loom, nothing else, everything else stays in proportion. But at 24 inches and at 32 inches, you can now start to consider making uh, fabric that you could use then to make uh, garments, uh, a jacket or a vest or a skirt, something of that nature. Uh, so this real estate up in, up in the, uh, the left to right of your loom, uh, the beams that we have on here uh, is an important consideration when you when you look at purchasing a rigid head of loom. Uh, you always like to invest in as much real estate here as you can. Um, you can always weave something two or four inches wide on a 32 inch uh, loom, but you can't weave something 28 inches wide on a 16 inch loom. So you want to try to think not tomorrow, but in six months or a year. What are you going to be weaving and uh, what, what size of loom to, to get? Uh, think about that, but also think about just learning weaving. A lot of people come to us and say, well, will I like it? Can I do it? Is it difficult? Uh, will I stick with it? 
uh, what, what do I do when I, I'm done weaving with this? Do I, do I have to go on to a, a larger loom? The nice thing about a rigid heddle loom is that uh, the package, as the Kromskys put it together particularly, but just the price point of, of rigid heddle looms in general make it the perfect platform for entering into weaving as a beginner, uh, whether you're young or old, and if you're a weaver already, as I said, there are always projects that are very, very uh, typical for a rigid head of loom that you would rather do on a loom like this rather than a larger type loom. So it's, it's the perfect way to get into weaving to see if you like to do it without spending the, the great amount of money that a table loom or a floor loom will uh, uh, cost you. And uh, it uh, is also a, a smaller package, so it takes up less room. Uh, you can use uh, rigid head of loom typically without the stand, and I've got it on a stand here today, but without a stand, uh, under a bed, behind a couch, in a closet, put it away. But more importantly, a rigid head of loom you know, can be moved from room to room very easily. It can be taken out on the back porch. It can be taken out in the backyard, wherever you want to weave, going to a, a guild meeting or some weaver's group. You can take your, your Kromsky harp along. It's very transportable. And the harp also has some other features that make it even more transportable in that it folds. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, without spending a lot of money, you can determine whether weaving with a rigid head of loom is, is what you want to do. And everything that you learn on a rigid head of loom from creating the warp to designing projects and the, the interaction of color and textures and so forth to the actual weaving process and finishing. Everything that you learn on a, a rigid head of loom, you will use and will need and need to understand if you should move to a, a larger loom. So there's nothing lost in getting a rigid head of loom. Uh, it's great price point. You're going to learn everything that you need to, to know about weaving. and um, if you proceed and get really involved with weaving, there's always going to be projects that you can put on a rigid head of loom that uh, will make it part of your, your uh, weaving uh, uh, package. Uh, great for all ages and uh, there's always going to be a place for it. So it's consider weaving. Uh, this is going to be probably a great platform to start from. Uh, the Kromsky Harp is, is just a great product and uh, now we're going to talk about uh, uh, some aspects of the loom that uh, will also be important to you as well.